I started filming here, that, that there's some things that you can do yeah. with, with Cloudera that you could not possibly do in the, in the old world. So That's right. You, you, you give me an example. Yeah, so to, I think exactly to your point, the cost piece um, is really the door opener for a lot of customers because the, the kind of solving new classes of problem is very, problems is very exciting. But when, a, when one of our customers is trying to make the case to bring this technology in, it's pretty easy to say, look, here's the hard dollar savings. I'm going from this platform to that platform, and, and that's right. money that drops to the bottom line. Yeah. But um, to your point, like that doesn't, what gets you really excited is all the problems you can solve that couldn't be solved before. So for example, uh, solving a cybersecurity problem. Imagine, you know, so a number of our customers are dealing with uh, hundreds of billions of IT events that they're that are coming at their company every day, mm. and they need to quickly uh, analyze all of those and find the patterns and figure out which of those things is a threat and which of those is normal course of business, right. and then how they respond to that. Okay. Uh, and uh, the infrastructure we provide allows people to do that at a scale and scope that they couldn't possibly have done with a traditional relational database. Even if they threw as much money. As, as they had even, available. Even through all the money in the world, you, okay. you're not gonna you're not gonna get a, a comparable result. Okay, give me another example. Yeah, so I think another one that we talked about before was um, uh, uh, geospatial data. So uh, there's an article just recently in the Wall Street Journal talking about Monsanto, mm. uh, and their their uh, goal was to take their existing customers that buy Monsanto seeds. Um, and find a way for them to get more yield uh, out of those same seeds. And uh, what they did is they looked at um, uh, the, the, uh, some maps, um, looked at a bunch of uh, uh, geolo geologic data about uh, where the farmland is, um, looked at a bunch of soil samples, looked at historical yields, looked at weather history and uh, other indicators of maybe what weather might be uh, in future years. And they put all that together and what they kicked out is a series of recommendations around how to plant. So uh, how far to space things, uh, how deep in the soil to plant, perhaps even different genetic variants of seeds that'll do better in different types mm -hmm. of soil. Mm -hmm. uh, and early indications are that with the same seeds and the same crop, uh, same quantity of land, they can actually generate more food per acre uh, than was previously possible. And that's a pure uh, information service um, that, that you know, is only made possible by this kind of uh, approach to data management. And they are able to sell that as an additional service that's to right. their customers. That's right, that's a service they provide. Which um, didn't exist before. That's right, new line of business. And that's not the only one, I'll give you another one like that. Uh, there's a neat company called Skybox, mm. and uh, they put um, some low cost satellites up in the air, uh, and then they uh, take photos of, of um, the Earth uh, every day. Uh, all those images come back to uh, our system, uh, and they can do things like go to a hedge fund trader and say, I can tell you how many ships were in this port where uh, aluminum and uh, other uh, commodities you trade. Yeah. I can tell you how busy this port is. I can tell you how many cars are in the parking lot really? of, yeah, I can count, I can use this to process images and count cars. And I can say, hey, um, uh, retailer X, would you like to know how many cars were in the parking lot of retailer Y? Uh, three doors down the street <laughs> at this hour of the day, right? So uh, these are there's and there's many many more. It doesn't have to be exotic data. A lot of times it's simply associating. Uh, it's dealing with the scope of data and associating different uh, types of data in ways that you couldn't have done before. So um, one of our customers is a large bank, uh, and they had uh, their uh, big credit card business. They have credit card marketing people that spend lots of time thinking about what campaigns to run and how to attract you to sign up for a card. And they have a credit risk modeling team which spends lots of time trying to anticipate if you're a, a default risk. Right. Well, those two teams actually had their own data sets and their own models and their own mm. everything mm -hmm. independent from one another. So they, could, they be, could be as well, right? Yeah, so they could be they could be talented at marketing to poor credit worthy people, <laughs> or they could be right, or they could be talented at, at you know scoring people but never get sufficient number of leads in sure. to actually attract sure. those customers. So what they're actually doing with their software is making all of that one continuous analytic process where uh, credit worthiness and responsiveness to a campaign and all these things are all variables in a, in a larger uh, analytic model that they've built in our platform. Well, that makes Cloudy a real cool company now, doesn't it? It makes it a lot of fun. Good to meet you, Charles. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Good to see you. Wow. Stories like that every day of the week.